Good day. I'm John Fernandez, and welcome to E! News Live Live from AACSB's World Headquarters in Tampa, Florida. E! News Line Live is a streaming video program that addresses issues facing the management education industry. The format is one-on-one -on -one interviews with management education leaders conducted by me. The first 25 minutes will be discussion of predetermined questions, with the final 15 minutes will be discussion of questions posed by the audience. E! News Line Live will air bi-monthly. Why are we doing E! News Line Live? We want to be able to discuss issues facing the management education industry with a recognized expert and a live global audience in a cost-effective manner. While the live interview is open to the public, AACSB member registrations will be prioritized. Approximately 250 sites have registered for this session. A recording of the E-Newsline Live segment will be available on AACSB's website the day after the live broadcast. Our guest today is Stephanie Lenway, the Eli and Edith L. Broad Dean of the Broad College of Business at Michigan State University. Stephanie is a leading researcher and consultant on global technology management and corporate strategy. Our discussion today with Dean Lenway will be on Preparing for an Uncertain Future, How Does Undergraduate Business Education Measure Up? Business is the most popular field of study at the undergraduate level. More than 90% of AACSB member schools offer undergraduate business education. It is more important than ever that we prepare our students to both understand and lead in an increasingly complex and interconnected global environment. Few people are in a better position to help us explore undergraduate business education than our guest. Stephanie, welcome to E-Newsline Live. John, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. All right, we'll get right to the questions. You've had an opportunity to observe and experience an undergraduate education at several universities, including Washington University in St. Louis, the University of Minnesota, the University of Illinois uh, at Chicago, and now Michigan State University. How would you characterize undergraduate business education as unique relative to other undergraduate disciplines? John, business is a fascinating phenomenon. It's fundamentally multidisciplinary and draws upon economics, psychology, political science, history, sociology, and if you get to neurotic development, it even draws upon anthropology. Students learn to evaluate the financial viability of projects in their studies and develop a fair amount of business acumen. Business students do. They focus on problem solving, getting things done. Their skills are immediately applicable. We also focus on leadership development, which students can experience through their co-curricular engagement in student clubs, internships, study abroad, and other activities. And we also provide students with an appreciation for dynamic, technological, and eco economic change. Very good. Now for a little controversy. A recent Carnegie Foundation study uh, noted the importance of preparing students for civic engagement. What is the responsibility of business schools in preparing students for civic engagement, and, and how are they doing? Well, John, business schools have the responsibility to help students understand that business institutions are embedded in larger social and political systems. Students also need to understand that robust competitive strategies take into account prevailing social and political norms and values. In, I've seen that students drive emphasis on civic engagement through their interest in service learning and consulting for nonprofit agencies they work in food shelves, they build home for habitat and humanity. So I think we have a lot of basis for optimism. Also, we do our best to give them a fundamental understanding of economics, which is, all, which is critical for civic engagement. Economics is critical. Uh, students out there, I, I hope you'll take a look at uh, the Net Impact Organization, which is an excellent civic engagement uh, and other uh, areas of social responsibility organization for students doing great things. A national survey of undergraduate students in the U.S. Uh, recently showed that uh, undergraduate business students self-reported spending less time 
preparing for class than students in any other field. In your opinion, is this a reflection of the lack of uh, rigor of the programs uh, or the quality of students or something else? Well, John, there is some evidence that business students spend less time doing what we conventionally understand to be studying, which is reading and writing. But in the curriculum, concepts build upon one another. The time value of money is taught in finance and accounting. Porter's Five Forces model is taught in marketing and corporate strategy. So our students do learn how to be efficient. Also, they're millennials, which means they're born after 1980, and learn from engagement in problem solving and to engagement in technology. They also spend a lot of time learning from one another in group projects. Well, undergraduate education has, has certainly changed since I graduated in 1975 with an undergraduate degree in business. Business students are eager to hit the ground running uh, when they are hired for their, for their first job uh, after graduation. We see that here at, at AACSB. Uh, what are employers saying about the specific knowledge and skills uh, they're seeking when they hire recent undergraduates? And, and how can business schools ensure that their uh, graduates are ready? In my conversations with recruiters, I've learned that they want more than students who've done well in class. They are looking for analytical skills that students pick up in accounting, finance, and marketing. They're looking for an understanding of technology and, and uh, popularly used software such as Excel. They're also looking for critical thinking and that students can think strategically and globally, that they can build and identify alternative paths to a solution and then develop a rationale to pick one. Recruiters are looking for solid communication skills, for writing, which admittedly we need some work on. They're looking for solid oral communication skills that students know how to listen, speak with impact, and engage in public speaking. They're also looking for leadership and for students who engages and motivates their teammates to drive for results. And finally, they're looking for some evidence that the individual will engage in self-reflection and act with integrity to engender trust and respect amongst their colleagues. Students build these skills through internships, doing research with faculty, taking leadership roles in student organizations, basically any activity that gives students the responsibility to get things done. I think internships are very important. Uh, Michigan State does a great job. I'd also point out uh, the excellent job that's done by Northeastern University over many, many years. Uh, extremely high placement rates, and a lot of that has to do with the quality of their, uh, their internship program. So we've got a lot of schools doing some great things with undergraduate experiential uh, uh, support. Uh, next question. Uh, you've mentioned several skills that are, correspond with practical experience. Uh, there seems to be a trend of more schools increasing opportunities for real life experience in undergraduate programs. Do you view this as a positive shift? And if so, uh, what are some ways in which schools can maximize learning from these experiences? Well, John, I do believe that for students to be prepared for their business careers, they need to apply what they learn in class to solve real business problems. Through experiential learning opportunities, they learn how to frame problems, work with incomplete data, deal with people, and fundamental project management skills. At the Carlson School, we had the opportunity to build four student-run enterprises in which students dealt with clients in branding and consulting, with investors in an equity and bond fund, and with entrepreneurs interested in commercializing technology. Now, in all of these, they're more effective if class concepts are aligned with the consulting projects, which requires a little bit of work and coordination with the faculty. Okay. Business remains the most popular undergraduate major in the United States, uh, more than one-fifth of degrees uh, uh, awarded, um, and also receives a large share of students across the globe, although we don't measure quite as effectively. Yet the specific interests of students um, in this set uh, could hardly be considered homogenous. 
At the undergraduate level in particular, many are not quite sure what their interests are. Aside from offering business majors or concentrations in various functional areas, uh, what are business schools doing to help undergraduate students identify their personal interests and pursue related career paths? So John, one thing we do at Michigan State is take our students on corporate tours for alternative spring break. And there they can understand the different kind of careers that are available to them. This year, the corporate tour is going to Europe and international opportunities are becoming much more popular. We also encourage students to do day-long shadowing of alumni to learn about the different tasks associated with a particular career and different corporate cultures. Internships are becoming critical to the employment process and we're seeing them start to move to the sophomore year. We also do a, a lot of career advising, academic advising, and then we invite hundreds of recruiters to Michigan State for career fairs. Students can also learn about future careers through study abroad programs, tuning into social media, and networking with alumni. At Michigan State, we have a program called Financial Markets Institute, where alumni who work in investment banking prepare our students for the initial interviews. And then beyond that, students have availability to interest inventory so they can figure out what they might be good at in their future careers. Uh, all good techniques. I, I, I believe that uh, undergraduate business education has is, is certainly been uh, productive and growing over the past decade, but uh, recently, as reported by one of our staff, uh, Joe Mondello, uh, we've noticed a, a slight decrease in undergraduate enrollments. That could be cyclical, it could be based on a number of factors, but we need to keep working to improving undergraduate education so we can keep that lofty position of being one out of five graduates in, in the world. Uh, Stephanie, the title of this uh, session mentions preparing for an uncertain future. Uh, statistics suggest that today's students will have multiple careers with varying roles, maybe in industries that we don't contemplate now. Uh, what skills are required for business students to navigate an uncertain future? And how are, how are schools uh, doing uh, in teaching these skills? Well, we can always do better. I think increasingly all students need some understanding of entrepreneurship and how to create a business case for a new venture. Students also need a global mindset. Jobs and companies are migrating around the world. They'll need a global mindset to be successful. Continuous learning is becoming more important. Students need critical thinking skills to learn how to succeed in their next job. We also have to provide students with an, an appreciation for the creative process. The future will be more about new ways of solving problems than managing routines. I also think an in-depth understanding of an industry or technology is helpful for students to appreciate the innovation process. All excellent strategies. Uh, you recently served on AACSB's Globalization of Management Education Task Force, and prior to that have consulted to senior managers in international firms such as 3M, uh, Nokia, uh, Applied Materials, and Honeywell uh, on topics such as, as how business uh, people can build global mindsets and how companies design global innovation strategies. Uh, from these experience, what perspective can you share uh, concerning the integration of international perspectives in undergraduate education? Well, John, I try to think about what companies need to s succeed and thrive. For example, most small U.S. companies don't engage in international business. So strategies for international market entry are increasingly more important for companies to continue to thrive in a global economy. Students also need to understand their global competition and global strategy, regardless if they work in a domestic or global company. Increasingly, cross-cultural business is important and their understandings of how business is done in different ways in different cultures is critical. Students have to learn how to work with people from different cultures in a multicultural business environment and 
learn how to value and identify the expertise that's distributed around the world and then appreciate the different organizational forms that they could put in place to access this expertise. If you read the press, it's also clear everybody, and especially our business students, needs an understanding of international economics, the balanced payments, currency valuation, international trade policy, and more and more, we're going to have to understand risk involved in sovereign debt. I wrote in this month's uh, Biz Ed a point that, um, that I think is in the, in the long term important that schools consider, and that's to, this, this idea of, of designing uh, tri-continental uh, uh, curriculum whereby students from, from different continents can work together on the same course. And with technology, I think that's, that's certainly feasible. Some schools are doing a really good job of that already, so it's another way of filling out that global dimension. All right, for our uh, last uh, prepared uh, question, or a predetermined question, uh, looking ahead, in what ways do you predict undergraduate business education will evolve? Uh, what kind of changes are uh, or should be on the horizon? Well, first, I think we need to stay in touch with recruiters and make sure that students are prepared for successful careers, because the skill sets are changing more quickly than our courses. We also need to understand how to use technology, like you just mentioned, getting connecting students across countries, to respond to the ways that students learn. We need more international experiences. So students develop cultural intelligence and the skills to engage in multicultural business. We also need more emphasis on creativity to drive change and innovation. And possibly we need to consider stronger ties to the liberal arts to ensure that our students have the critical thinking skills to prepare them for rapidly changing markets and continuous innovation. And certainly diversity and the disciplines working together out, outside of business with business students uh, can yield uh, substantial opportunities for innovation, not just for the students, uh, learning, but also for, for the school's curriculum. Well, let's turn to questions from our live audience, and we thank you for these. Our first question uh, was submitted by uh, a person all the way from Saudi Arabia. Uh, in designing undergraduate business curriculum, what is the current model? Uh, is it three, four, or five-year program, uh, a foundation year, or two plus three or four, and, and how about uh, the internship period? Well. Here I can speak from the Michigan State perspective. We admit students in their junior year, but before that, they take five courses in preparation for admission, and we have competitive admission, so they need to get good grades in these five courses. The hardest ones are accounting. In terms of the internship, uh, we're seeing them go earlier, as I mentioned that some companies are looking for sophomores to start to build relationships with so they can work together to create a future employee. I think that's, that's, a, that's an interesting change. That, that's early for internships and um, certainly uh, productive. Uh, it's never too early to, to begin seeing how a business operates, uh, but at the same time it's very important to build uh, that understanding of, of business disciplines. I'm not one of these that believes that you happen stance onto a, a being an effective business person. I think it starts with an effective undergraduate, master's degree education, and, and is supplemented by practice, especially in the early years. That's a strong foundation, a foundation for the future. The next question was submitted by a student at a school in Florida, right here. Uh, what would you say is the fastest growing or highest demand bachelor's degree in business uh, as far as job opportunities go? Well, again, let me speak from a Michigan State perspective. We're seeing an overwhelming demand for students with supply chain expertise. And I noticed there's a port nearby, so I think you might right find outside that my door. <laughs> in Florida as well. So supply chain, also we're seeing a huge demand for predictive analytics and data mining, which would be part of marketing research, but also we're trying to build the curriculum to respond to the need for company to, companies to have employees to analyze huge data sets, which we haven't had the technological capacity to create in the past. So accounting remains strong. 
Finance, I think, took a hit from 2008. So at least jobs in investment banking may be harder to come by in the future. Accounting has been strong, especially in the United States in the post Sarbanes Oxley uh, uh, era um, for various reasons. Um, but I think accounting also will be strong globally as economies develop. You need accountants. But often talked about at the master's degree level, I don't think it's too early to begin thinking about building one's uh, entrepreneurial skills. Entrepreneurs will develop the economies of the world, not multinational corporations. The next question was submitted by someone from near home in Minnesota. Uh, is there any data on potential differences in student outcomes between undergraduate business programs uh, uh, or of, of, of liberal arts schools and versus other types of institutions uh, or uh, differences between Minnesotans and Pennsylvanians? I think that's what uh, probably was intended. Go ahead. So there's a, a recent study called Academically Adrift and the result in this study is that students who do more reading and do more writing do better on a test, an aptitude test that they get after their sophomore year. So I think there is some evidence that the traditional learning activities contribute to student performance. However, we have to keep in mind that that's not enough. Recruiters are not just looking for students who do well in class. They need students who can interact with their peers and lead their teams. Very good, critically important. Next question was submitted uh, by uh, an individual at school in New Jersey. Uh, can you talk about some of the primary weaknesses of undergraduate business programs uh, in existence today? Well, these are gross generalizations, but I'll give a few because I do, in the AACSB spirit, believe in continuous improvement. You know, business, in my conversations with students, business can be a little bit ahistorical. They would like an appreciation for where did all these companies come from? What, was, what started at the beginning? Is it Robinson Crusoe? Is it the biography of Andrew Carnegie? But, you know, how do companies evolve over time? We can do a better job. Students would like to see this. I also think we're getting away from this, but sometimes the way we frame cases can be a little bit ethnocentric. We focus primarily, at least in the United States, on the US market to the exclusion of the rest of the world. Not very helpful for the future. We also could probably do a better job integrating across the functional areas. We sacrifice breadth for depth, and students end up working in their silos without an understanding of how what they're doing connects up with the rest of the company. And we could at least initially over-focus on practice to the detriment of theory, where only later in their studies do students actually appreciate you know, the basis for a discount rate or the reason we account for things, the theory behind how we account for value. And finally, we don't always prepare students for change to do things differently. You know, in the old fashioned days, we prepare them for the status quo, which is not going to work in the future economy. Yeah, I kind of look at it a, a, a little bit differently than the, the person submitting the question, uh, the weaknesses in the undergraduate programs. I think the real stress is in the graduate area, especially when you're taking individuals from disciplines outside of business. And into a very short period of time, you're trying to craft and cram uh, the development of the individual as a business professional. I know it's su supplemented often by work experience, but a uh, recent publication um, not so recent anymore, Rethinking the MBA, uh, which was done by uh, uh, some Harvard professors, uh, Tar and Garvin, and uh, one of our staff people, Patrick uh, Cullen, essentially says that, that a graduate education is, is, is so filled that the expectations are essentially, we want all this and more. So I tend to think that the, the undergraduate degree uh, has more time for the development of the individual, and that can be 
the, the graduate degree can help to supplement that. Uh, but we do have time to effectively develop students as business professionals. We can argue about their maturity. Uh, we have time to sprinkle uh, the social sciences and, and arts and sciences uh, into the curriculum to make a more rounded individual. What I do think we need is, is the ability and, and the intensity uh, of our programs to make sure that, that everything that we do counts, including those learning experiences. Well, it's a quiet day in Tampa. Uh, we don't have any additional uh, live questions. Um, I appreciate the time that uh, Stephanie has taken, not just to answer these questions and her obviously uh, effective preparation time, but coming to us all the way from the state of Michigan to uh, you, warm and sunny Tampa, Florida. We hope our weather treated you very well, but thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to our, our viewing uh, audience and those of you that will see this on uh, a rebroadcast uh, for your active participation in illuminating discussion on the future of undergrad, undergraduate business education. We've got a lot to be proud of and a lot more to do. Uh, please mark your calendars for the next broadcast of eNewsline Live, which is scheduled for January 11th, 2012. Uh, we'll have a very interesting uh, a first of a, of a series uh, session. Um, which will be a feature of our, uh, our strategy of discussing management education in a particular region. Uh, we'll hear the perspectives of Ying Yi Chen, who's Dean of the School of Economics uh, and Management at Tsinghua University in Beijing, and he'll talk about uh, management education in China and across Asia. Uh, please keep an eye on our website for further information about this and subsequent episodes of eNewsLine Live. Thank you and have a great day.